Hi, welcome to another edition of Family Matters. I'm Chloe Leary, the Executive Director of the Winston Prouty Center. And this year we're celebrating our 50th year, so we're having a special edition of Family Matters. This month I am thrilled to be uh, talking with Jennifer and Jennifer. <laughs> so um, Jennifer Jacobs is the owner of Thrive EAP, and Jennifer Stromson is the Director of Programs at Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much Thank for you. joining me. We are going to be talking about child care. Yeah. So I'm hoping some of our viewers have been paying a little bit of attention, but um, just to say uh, you all are part of our Child Care Counts Coalition, so we're trying to uh, inc maintain <laughs> and increase quality, high quality child care mm -hmm. in the county. So um, thank you so much for being part of that work. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's start with um, just what you do. What do you, like what does Thrive EAP do and what, is BD, what do you do at BDCC? So go ahead and oh, let us great. know. Thanks. Um, yeah, so at Thrive we work with businesses to provide them with services um, to their employees. So we have a branch that is employee counseling and then we do human resource consulting to small and medium-sized businesses. Um, they typically don't have their own HR mm -hmm. staff, not dedicated HR staff. And then we do um, trainings on a lot of different workplace topics that you know, we call it the people stuff. So mm -hmm. um, those are the main areas of what Thrive does for our local businesses. Great. Yeah, so uh, the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation, <laughs> BDCC, <laughs> BDCC. Is, uh, is one of the state's 12 RDCs. Um, and so the regional development corporations, they serve, they're the economic development sort of entities mm -hmm. for the region. Um, we are, they tend to be fairly small, um, but we are one of the largest because over the hmm. years it has um, built up real estate operations, which is one way that people mm. know us. We own the Cotton Mill, the Book Press, and we operate some of Exit One off on Industrial Park. But we also um, have sort of added programming over the years and um, got into sort of strategic planning as mm. a way to kind of get ahead of things and not be so reactive. Mm. Um, so we are one of the lead entities on the, well, we are the lead entity on the region's strategic plan and then one of the lead entities on the upcoming, hopefully soon to be approved federal, um, next five year strategic plan for the economy. So, um, and then our programs flow from that. You know, we basically use that to say, what are the problems? What do we need to be working mm -hmm. on? And then how can we act on those things? And also how can we partner mm -hmm. to impact those things like, mm -hmm. like childcare that relate? So that's a great segue. Yeah. Why, how is it that you knew that Child Care Counts as a coalition was a good place for you to put your energy when you think of child care in that, in that puzzle? Yeah, I think for us, because the strategic plan, while it guides our work, uh, you know, it's in terms of focusing more on small businesses, you know, than we used to, or providing more different services or engaging more experts like mm -hmm. Jen to come in and help small businesses, um, it also, um, you know, it's, it's about partnerships. And there's a lot of stuff that comes up through strategic planning that's like not us implementing mm -hmm. but that means well you know we can't get away from the fact that housing or workforce training or childcare are things that have everything to do with the economy and how employers are doing mm -hmm. and how people are doing in their careers and their earnings and so you know the the point is not always for us to take direct action sometimes we do and develop a program but it's mm -hmm. to you know make sure we're helping to support and engage with and you know be part of partnerships that are affecting those mm -hmm. things that, yeah. Uh, and a lot of people don't know why child care is such an important part of economic <laughs> development. Can you just talk a little bit about how it's part of that puzzle? I mean, I think we could go right to the personal, right? You know, uh -huh. if you don't know, it's because you haven't, you know, gone uh -huh. back to work <laughs> yes. and tried to make that calculation and mm -hmm. say, am I going to go back and earn enough mm -hmm. to make it worth it economically plus emotionally, mm -hmm. you know, and as far as my child's well-being. And so I think, um, you know, I certainly come at it from like a lot of us, you know, mm -hmm. from understanding personally that trade-off. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are some really great stories storytelling um, a couple of year, a year or so ago in Vermont about that you know people just having to make really hard decisions mm -hmm. at a time when Vermont is desperate for talented people in the mm -hmm. workforce mm -hmm. and that there are people making the decision not to be in the workforce okay, because yes. of child care yeah. um, so you know I think everything from the anecdotal to the actual data I worked on I worked on the Vermont Futures Project for a couple of years mm -hmm. and so I'm like really conscious of sort of the workforce data and mm -hmm. and that we have to impact any possible facet that will enable people to do what they want to do. Not work if they don't want mm -hmm. to, but work if they can and they mm -hmm. want to and they mm -hmm. need to. Um, and I think that's, uh, childcare is just critical. And then, you know, and then, and then anecdotes, back to anecdotes, hearing from young women that I know now mm -hmm. about um, issues of location, scarcity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. price, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I think those are, um, those are real. Cause every, it's, this is, you know, what you're talking about and the data you've, uh, created mm -hmm. kind of gone out and found mm -hmm. um, that's the accumulation of a thousand stories mm -hmm. right and each one of those right. really tells you yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah yeah I just wanted to jump in and say we're seeing I'm seeing that around the state mm -hmm. the child care um, counts coalition focusing here on Wyndham County but I'm doing some work with let's grow kids mm -hmm. so they're a statewide organization so mm -hmm. we do surveys 
and, and work with businesses all across the state. Mm -hmm. And what keeps coming up is like you were saying about going back to work or not going back to work and seeing, um, because we're doing surveys through employers, mm -hmm. um, we're hearing through those, you know, my spouse doesn't work. I don't have any childcare issues because my spouse doesn't mm -hmm. work because we couldn't find any childcare. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, so we're talking about the affordability <laughs> right. and the reliability. It's like, well, you know, currently I don't have a problem with that, mm -hmm. but I, it, that wasn't the choice we wanted to make. Mm -hmm. That one of us would be out of the workforce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly. actually I was looking at the um, the uh, quotes of people. We did a survey a year ago, yep. as you know, at the coalition, and people saying things like we might not have had a child, yes, or I almost exactly. didn't move to Brattleboro. Right. And so to your point of, we want to attract people to the region, but if we don't have the infrastructure, we're right. going to lose them. So yeah. it sounds yeah. like that's true here and, and oh. that you're hearing it and around the state and right. in other places too. Right. Absolutely. It wasn't until your article actually that it hit me that that was my choice. You know, we have oh. one child. Mm -hmm. and, oh. and, and it's yeah. so interesting, you know, I've been so immersed in this professionally and, and with the coalition, and I thought, oh, right. We have one kid because, <laughs> <laughs> we can because uh, when he was in childcare, you know, we kept thinking we'd like to have another kiddo, but how can we afford mm -hmm. more childcare? Really? And no one was talking. He's 14 now, so this yeah. really wasn't on my radar yeah. at the time. It oh, wasn't. I wasn't doing this human resource yeah. work then, yeah. and it was just the choice my family made uh -huh. and continued to mm -hmm. make. Right. You know, so mm -hmm. um, so yeah. yeah, that story is my story That's actually. So interesting. Yeah, and yeah. I would you know, it's, and so then when you start to sort of add those things up cumulatively you start to you know sort of look at this and say like this is something that is getting in the way of people making choices mm -hmm. making choices for long-term financial well-being and so when I talk to someone who's in their 20s or mm -hmm. 30s and just starting a family and they're trying to figure out like you know how can I make it work to be in Vermont you know mm -hmm. it is not that much it's somewhat cheaper maybe than Boston but it's not that not much that cheaper much. Um, I have student loan debt and the generation before me maybe didn't have that I am looking at earning less today and also earning less over my career. Mm -hmm. And those are all just realities. And I think many people, many of the wonderful young people who are already here have reconciled themselves to those realities. Mm -hmm. But then when they start to throw in and yeah. the childcare okay. costs, which are very high and the options are you know pretty limited, and you know so on and so forth they start and then they buy a home and they start mm. to look at those costs and the depreciation on the you know the house that hasn't been taken care of maybe that well and all the things <laughs> you know then they start to go wow this like super doesn't add up and there's and it's not just like a preference thing it starts yeah. to become like really the death by a thousand cuts mm -hmm. and that i feel like we are losing young people and young families who absolutely want to make it work do get it mm -hmm. do get the lifestyle mm -hmm. and want to be here but they just cannot mm -hmm. layer those factors on mm -hmm. um over the course of a you right. know a lifetime so mm -hmm. yeah. we gotta fix it mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. Yeah. we're working on it yeah, yeah. yeah. When, so yeah. when you think a little bit about um the in terms of what those challenges are um, there's the personal mm -hmm. challenges of um you know what people, individual families have to struggle with, but as we look at the systems and the economy and different pieces that we might move, what are some of the biggest challenges that we're facing in terms of childcare as infrastructure? Uh, startup oh, costs. Start? I <laughs> mean, you can just say startup costs. It is start hard costs, yeah. to start a business. I mean, you know, yeah. you're a business person. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. but I see yeah. it every day. You know, yeah. startup costs. So if you're going to start a child care center mm -hmm. or expand one, mm -hmm. you know, it is, it's difficult and it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, that is, it is, it's just a whole other animal. And I think, um, and it's very, we're kind of in this reverse. Trends tend to follow demographic mm -hmm. sort of trends, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you'll see an area that's burgeoning with young people and childcare centers will start to mm -hmm. pop up and expand. Mm -hmm. But we're not in that place. So what we need to do is create the conditions where we kind of get a little bit of, and also, so that's one thing. It's like if we started to see population growth, we would start to see people huh. maybe investing yeah. in that. And, and yeah. um, But we're going to have to push that ahead, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And that's really what infrastructure is about, is going out where, you know, where things aren't yet mm -hmm. and having things meet you there. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's like you lay the water sewer and then, you know, uh -huh. homes go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's right, infrastructure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a difficult thing because that's why the public is involved in infrastructure. The private sector doesn't lay water and sewer, you know, mm -hmm. to see, <laughs> to right. see where it's going to go. So, yeah. um, but the other thing of it that I think is, you know, we have to really get at is um, thinking about, you know, how what you have done with the survey is to start to put some, some data on it. Because mm -hmm. back, you know, back to what you were talking about with your experience, mm -hmm. 
it, it's an invisible thing. It's kind right. of like housing mm -hmm. needs. Like if mm -hmm. someone needs a home that they can't find in Brattleboro, like mm -hmm. say a first home and that's $150,000 and doesn't need any repairs, mm -hmm. they don't live here because they right. didn't find, find it, it. Right. Yeah. And so if somebody didn't find right. the childcare that they needed, you're, they're not being counted in some way. Exactly. So doing research like you've done mm -hmm. to go out and try to survey people mm -hmm. and try to get in between the cracks of the, we know the spots mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. in childcare, but we don't know who isn't accessing that or why mm -hmm. they didn't previously access mm -hmm. it or what other, and that's really important information. And we mm -hmm. tend to not know mm -hmm. how much we don't know things. Right. Don't know and that's things. been critical, I think, in the mm -hmm. conversation we've had in Wyndham yeah. County, that's very special mm -hmm. and, and important mm -hmm. so that we can say like, well, let's lay that infrastructure mm -hmm. out. So. Right, mm -hmm. right, yeah. And I'd add a layer to that is um, how siloed it is to yeah. provide childcare. Like you're yep. talking about like start the startup and we're talking about an entity starting it up. Mm -hmm. But addressing that because of the, the challenges of child care, the cost, the, the, uh, the, the access to it, you know, the mm -hmm. lack of space, and the quality is something that can't be solved by one particular right. entity, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So while the public sector is charged with laying that other kind of infrastructure, child care, right, no, no one entity holds it, we mm -hmm. all hold it. Mm -hmm. And so then how do we connect all those pieces, um, you know, employer and, mm -hmm. and individuals and the private sector and the public sector with legislation? Um, so I think that that's a particular challenge about mm -hmm. how do we coordinate all those pieces, mm -hmm. um, which I, I'm excited to see the traction that's happening here in Wyndham County. Uh -huh. I think that you know Vermont yeah. is small enough that it can be like a little lab state uh -huh. for the rest of the country, right. but Wyndham County can also be a, a lab yeah. for, the state. for the state. And it takes so much persistence to keep going out there yeah. and talking to people and starting the conversation even when you don't have a solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, in terms of uh, culture, we were talking a little bit before we started about people's perception of mm -hmm. like children in our culture and what's our responsibility as, mm -hmm. you know, I think people understand why um, pipe water mm -hmm. and sewer lines right. are <laughs> in the public domain. Um, and I think we've even gotten to a place where we understand why K through 12 is in the public domain, mm -hmm. K through 12 education. Yeah. So when you think about sort of cultural um, understandings of mm -hmm birth through five, how does that change the, the equation or impact the equation? Yeah, I think that perspective is definitely missing in a widespread manner, mm -hmm. like the, the other understandings you were just mentioning. Um, I think that, I, I would guess, okay, so here's a total just like Jen's wild guess, <laughs> um, is that it's just, it's not as seen, it's not as prevalent, it's not in, in front of us as huh. much as other infrastructure. Like, yes, we know that like, you know, babies and little children need to be mm -hmm. cared for in, in, you know, some very basic ways, and we mm -hmm. understand that, but in terms of what's going on for their cognitive development and how that impacts the rest of their life mm -hmm. and how that impacts our community, mm -hmm. I think that link is really, um, it's hard for people to see as much as it's talked about, it's still just not out there enough. Right. Hmm. That, mm -hmm. that kind of like common understanding. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get there, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that the other thing is that there's, um, as with infrastructure actually, because I shouldn't say that the private sector doesn't build infrastructure, it often mm -hmm. does. That's true. But it's usually right. a partnership, right. you know, yeah. and it sort of doesn't get to do it wherever the heck it wants, and, <laughs> you know, right. and but often the public sector can't do it on its own without sort of a meaningful mm -hmm. project coming in. And so I think mm -hmm. that's sort of how I think about, you know, any infrastructure is like sometimes in certain instances, it is best delivered as a, as a public good in a public service and other times there are areas where the public sector maybe doesn't best belong mm -hmm. but a lot of times if there's it's actually a partnership and people don't really understand that because what mm -hmm. they see is their side of it you know right. they see like oh I'm part of mm -hmm. you know um, really like a you know commitment to care for low-income families and that's great and they think of it as a public sector thing mm -hmm. but then someone else is coming into the same program through sort of like mm -hmm. I'm a self-pay person and we're all part of this great th I mean mm -hmm. you know ideally we do these things like kind of together right. you know in a civilized right. democracy Right. and we're just finding different ways to support things as much as they need to be but the but the real issue is that I think we we misunderstand that the the, the public sector's role is to solve what the market won't solve mm -hmm. you know what that solution mm -hmm. looks like can, mm -hmm. should and be should be different mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. so we should not race towards a solution mm -hmm. you know that's like mm -hmm. it has to be funded this way or it always has to be owned by this entity mm -hmm. but we have to get to a solution mm -hmm. and and it should look different in different mm -hmm. communities you know mm -hmm. and I would say I you know I look around you know I I live in Greenfield Massachusetts you know Greenfield is is a, a, like Brattleboro in a lot of ways and we're the county seat and we are you know we have a lot of the services and and we have childcare that is very much you know tuned to the population that we mm -hmm. that we have, and then mm -hmm. you go one town over and you can't find a childcare provider that accepts any 
kind of you know public mm -hmm. subsidy or whatever they don't yeah. work with that mm -hmm. right and it's very binary mm -hmm. you know and it's so it's really hard to find places not only that are you know kind of frankly kind of democratic mm -hmm. <laughs> you know right. we're like all of right. my neighbors and I can set our kids right. and I found that really strange when I moved here and yeah. so I think back to the silos thing I think has really bad unintended effects mm -hmm. in terms of our democracy and our mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. and I also think that it has um, it really limits the possible solutions mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of like publicly funded programs that would absolutely benefit from having people who can pay mm -hmm. but aren't finding the childcare that they want right. in their town. Mm -hmm. You know, I drove my kid out of my town to childcare, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't qualify for Head Start, right. but I was working in the next town. Right. <laughs> so, right. you know, it doesn't make any right. sense. Right. And, I, and I would much rather be, uh, you know, as with, you know, a lot of other things, like, you know, I would much rather be contributing to the thing and helping support mm -hmm. something, um, but the public systems aren't set up They're to really, to to really be, like, yeah. mixed that way. So anyway, I think, I think there's a lot of, I think we have what we need. Uh -huh. to make to mm -hmm. manifest the solutions mm -hmm. that we need mm -hmm. but that cross silo work it's like you know you did that's it you nailed it and mm -hmm. then that's like a lot of work mm -hmm. and we have to stay right. committed to it, it is, and, and, and that's why child care counts is like so phenomenal yeah. and unique right. so yeah right thinking about uh, public sector, private sector, how things come together, we probably have a lot of the resources we need are we using them the right way so mm -hmm. child care is a very interesting market um, because it doesn't, it's, it is public and private. So you talk about Head Start, um, there are some public programs in public schools, mm -hmm. there are lots of private providers just doing self-employed work, there are nonprofit centers, there are for-profit centers. Do you, um, do you think it's possible to take that mixed delivery system? I mean, I think that that's one of the challenges we're sort of talking mm -hmm. about what's getting in our way. Yeah. It, it, can we see a place where all of that can still exist and work together? Or are we going to have to come up with a more um, uniform solution for early childhood that mm -hmm. looks like public school, for instance, which kind of scares me. I'll just, right. that's, my, that's my fear. But what do you think about that? Can we keep the mixed delivery system and have it work? If yeah. you want to attract and retain workforce, you have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just have to offer those choices. Right. That's, you know, and that's because it's so different for every family. And you right. have to be able to... You know, you, we all know people whose, you know, kids started out here and needed to go there, right? right? Yeah. Who it worked well for one kid to be mm -hmm. in a home care setting and another kid really right. needed that, like, very active, structured nursery yeah. school. It's just, like, we have to have all those options. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what's great about how we do things, yeah. you know. And, and the downside of having systems like some countries have where you have this provided as part of your mm -hmm. educational mm -hmm. continuum from birth is it's one size fits all, mm -hmm. and that has real limitations mm -hmm. and doesn't actually work as well. So I think at, at its best, our system delivers something that is really great for different families, yeah. different yes, configurations, and yeah. kids. Yeah. And yeah. the rural nature of where we live. Yeah. I mean, I can't, even, I can't right. even imagine, right? <laughs> right. You know, when they're right locationally, it's like I'm going from right. Londonderry to Bellows Falls yes. to my job at Mount Snow, and I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. not fair. And I think that, like you said, we do have the. Um, some of the work I've been seeing, particularly with Let's Grow Kids, so I can have this you know, broader lens around mm -hmm. what's happening in the state. And when we think about working across those silos, if employers can help support it, you know, for instance, if they could, um, you know, pay some sort of um, you know subscription, if you will, to a mm -hmm. childcare facility mm -hmm. to guarantee a certain number of spaces, then that provides that um, operation. Um, underlying um, operational mm -hmm. um, financial support to help perhaps keep that particular facility in in mm -hmm. place, mm -hmm. um, and then par and then there's uh, you know the subsidies could be increased so that families who are making right. what are traditionally you know middle income mm -hmm. and don't qualify, mm -hmm. then they can afford the childcare mm -hmm. easier. Mm -hmm. So if we just weave together the things that already exist. It would need to be better weavers, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> like yeah. the threads are all yep. there. We just need to weave them better. And so I think to um, who and who holds that work? So right. you're saying like the coalition is a great example of people coming together. It's all of our jobs. Yep. Um, and it's. It, I think some people have a hard time sometimes seeing how. Um, uh, well, this, this isn't my worry, but it is all of our worries. And there's yeah. actually in Greenfield, there's an opioid task force. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. That yeah. is, absolutely, it's the same model though mm -hmm. of like yep. people who just cared enough to come together. But it has really strong direction, like mm -hmm. through the sheriff's department. So it's sort of they're not, they're very action oriented, and it's you know there's a there's a lot of potential to do this. And I think you know what I would love to see a lot of different things tested out. But I think coming back to you know what's realistic for families and also to not change the nature of the communities I mean, that we live in, mm -hmm. you know, is um, we, we really have to be sensitive to the fact that the centralizing things or, you know, trying to overly, you know, standardize things. I mean, you look at school consolidation, it's like, you know, it's, it's scary enough when it's your high school or it's mm -hmm. terrifying to people when it's their elementary schooler 
oh my gosh, I'm driving my baby where, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's, yeah. I, so we have to figure that stuff out. But I also think that we're like in an interesting time where um, I think thinking through the way that benefits and subsidies have been delivered, mm -hmm. you know, there's the, the means testing, you know, we, we have income inequality that is just getting worse. Mm -hmm. And we, we have structures in our social programs that are, um, you know, in order to allocate limited resources fairly, mm -hmm. um, they're very restrictive and they're sort of doubling down yeah. on the hollowing out of the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality. Mm -hmm. So if you're falling off that childcare benefit cliff right. every single time you try yeah. to work a little more right. and it's, or it's pushing you back into poverty right. to pay for that that's childcare, right. we're not winning at this. Right. And we have to figure out how to design our benefits right. and our on-ramps, you know, with a continuum that has people's like economic well-being in mind. We're not trying to keep people comfortable in poverty or get them just out of poverty so they can fall right, back in. Right. The goal is to get people to where they are thriving right. and self-sufficient and hopefully on a career pathway or whatever they want to be on, you know, to be right. successful mm -hmm. and and designing our child care, right. you know, solutions would, would obviously need to Mm -hmm. support that and you know and but the other thing I think is one of the things I think is so fascinating about what what Jen does with companies is this sort of trying to kind of surface these cultural changes that uh -huh. need to happen yeah. you know that um, and I mean I do my sort of dumbed down version of this conversation sometimes mm -hmm. with employers of just like you know you're you're already spending a lot of benefits that have right. probably continued to be tuned to your aging workforce mm -hmm. and as those people retire mm -hmm. out you know, and you look at a medical plan that's been very carefully tuned to people in their 50s and 60s, and you don't have like a strong, you know, flexible savings account program, right? Right. Yeah. Well, that seems like that's because those people may not care about that, but your younger workers mm -hmm. do. And that may not cost you anything, but you mm -hmm. just may not have thought about how right. you haven't retuned yeah. to yeah. the people you're trying to bring in. And there's a lot of different ways for employers to be aware of that, mm -hmm. to think about flexibility, mm -hmm. to think about savings options, mm -hmm. to think about, you know, how they are you know, onboarding people, mm -hmm. how they're, you know, helping people sort of, um, you know, come back into the workplace mm -hmm. in a way that mm -hmm. allows them to figure out where that sweet spot is in mm -hmm. terms of earning and time spent with their kids, but also childcare costs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those are all ways that employers, uh, and then they will learn, you know, and I think one of the other things I loved about the survey you did was the um, reflections from employers, yes. you know, and their kind of growing awareness mm -hmm. about what this means mm -hmm. for the people they're they need. And Jen, I'm yeah. curious, like your work with employers and yeah. as we kind of keep expanding the conversation, are, does this resonate that people oh, yeah. are sort of learning and picking yes. up the threads and, are, are, you know, yeah, what's your experience with employers on that front? Yeah, um, a couple of things. One is that they oftentimes don't realize and employees don't realize what they're already doing that can be beneficial to meeting yeah. child care, right. child care related needs. Mm -hmm. And like you said, all that, the flexibility, having um, you know, an easy to implement benefit like a flex spending account. Um, sometimes those things are underutilized, they exist, but they're not promoted internally mm -hmm. enough. And so um, the first step is off is just increasing awareness yep. mm -hmm. and then um, thinking about how to help people access what's already there. And the second level I think is that mind shift, mm -hmm. you know, mindset shift of where can you be more flexible? Mm -hmm. You know, does this does this shift have to start rigidly at this time and right. end at this time? Absolutely. Because if it gave a half hour in one direction or the other, uh -huh. you would be making a huge difference for mm -hmm. that parent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in case you know some of the viewers don't, I want to just sort of map that out a little bit. So, like, if a childcare provider, you have they have a maximum amount of time when mm -hmm. your child can be there, yep. and then you have to pick up your kiddo, mm -hmm. and for every minute you're late picking right. up your kiddo, <laughs> you're getting a fee. It's something crazy, right? right? It's so because horrible. of course you know they're like, okay, we're ready to close yeah. but um, so if, you, if that employee could get out 15 the amount of time it would take to drive mm -hmm. if they could get out that much yes. earlier right. it would save them the fee you know all that, all that. so it's helping employers see what role because back to what you'd said like some people wondering where does this land whose responsibility mm -hmm. is it? and back to yep. oh you know my point, not really mine, all of ours, is that, well, it's everybody's. Mm -hmm. And that is one piece that an employer can play is that little bit of flexibility mm -hmm. in a few different ways. I don't think these conversations are happening enough in the workforce without us, you know, mm -hmm. the coalition or Let's Grow Kids making them happen. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so without raising these questions, employers don't necessarily know, some do, and some do to some degree, but don't really know the struggles mm -hmm. of their employees. Because mm -hmm. as an employee, Absolutely. I am just like right. marshalling on, trying mm -hmm. to figure this out and not mm -hmm. bring that burden to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think, so mm -hmm. one thing that's really important about the childcare accounts approach has been, it's, it's not, 
Um, a, a lot of things, Vermont's very activist. I love it dearly. I love driving from Massachusetts <laughs> to Vermont every day, but it is really, you know, there are a lot of organizations that are like, we have a solution and everything we do is to get everyone lining up behind that solution. Uh -huh. And and so, and that solution, you know, would be employers doing X mm -hmm. to create childcare. Mm -hmm. What I like about our approach is sort of like, it's we know it's gonna be all hands on deck. There's no one silver bullet. And it, there, it really is something where we have to be, meet employers where they are, especially because, you know, the vast majority of our employers are small. You right. know, there's not yes. going to yes. be, yeah. I'm not going to name names, mm -hmm. but I mean, I think of a lot of small companies with mm -hmm. 10 to 20 people, there's mm -hmm. not going to be an onside childcare there. No, and I nobody think. who works there would want their, no, that to be the case. No. Right. So so I think having that sort of, there's a lot of different solutions. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really important. I think another thing is um, because we actually are thinking about it very specific to the people we know and work with in our mm -hmm. communities, we are um, not so much just putting people into silos. So there's the organizational silos, mm -hmm. but then there's also sort of only thinking specifically about users. And mm -hmm. I think that's super important because there are a lot of nice childcare solutions out there for people who can somehow go with a nine to three option. And that's yeah. great. You know, yeah. I was able to do that. I was lucky. I got to stay home for a couple of years, yeah. you know, and that's great, but that's not for working people. Yeah. And there yeah. are childcare solutions for people who qualify based on income. And there, I had a childcare solution my employer offered. I was able to be part of, you know, I worked for a private school and they had mm -hmm. their own nursing yeah. school, but those are all segmented. And when you put those together, you start to realize like there are people left out mm -hmm. and yeah. there are just regular people mm -hmm. left yeah. out right. and people trying to have regular lives. And I think that's, we need to come at it from everybody. If we haven't solved in a way that really encompasses mm -hmm. everyone coming in whatever stage including grandparents including people who do you know who one parent is working during the day and one is working right, at night right, to make ends right. meet we haven't solved it and I think we're not done until yeah. you know we've done that I mean yeah. that's we're not mm -hmm. pushing for an agenda or a solution it's like we are really thinking right. holistically right. about this yeah. which yeah. I do think is a little bit different yeah. you know from sort of top-down yeah. things when yeah. I think about um, so the, how, what are, what are some successful ways people have gotten engaged in the conversation? Because I think you're right, it's about us pushing out the conversation and getting people to talk about it. So that's happening. So what's been successful and what more could we be doing to engage a broader um, scope of people who, to understand the issue? That's a good question. Um, so I think about some things that have been successful, it's, um, it's not something that's like the, like the, the solution. It's for one thing. It's asking a question, mm. and you know, I'm thinking about one thing that's just very much um, uh, the baby steps, perhaps, of a coalition of a couple of employers and trying to help to solve mm -hmm. this in their, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're situated near each other. And what it took was someone asking the question, and then um, a couple of people saying, "Yeah, I will explore that with you." Mm -hmm. So. Right there, I think that's success, uh -huh. right? Because yes. we're, we've broken down the silos. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, a little bit more tangible success is really simply and one of the employers we work with, with Let's Grow Kids, who was starting a flex spending account, mm -hmm. right? So you divert the, right? yeah. Yeah. those tax, those pre-tax yeah. dollars yeah. into yeah. a savings account, and um, and some employers can also provide a little bit mm -hmm. into those as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the, the real, like, um, when I talk to people, like, the takeaway here is, like, the success is not, like you said, creating a beautiful on-site child care mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. No, it's like these little, little incremental things, things yeah. that yeah. when you put them together, they add up. Yeah. Um, Great. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean actually, we're almost out of yeah. time, but I want to hear from you in well, terms of what's successful engagement. I mean, I think that success, successful engagement, the thing that I've been worrying about and, and thinking about is sort of specific projects, you know, because that's also kind of how we operate. Mm -hmm. You know, we tend to be that if, if no one else will do it, we'll do it, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yes. right? right, so it's the buyer of last resort for a giant mill building, it turns out, you know? And then right. you're like, oh, it turned, you turned into something. Right, right. Or, <laughs> right. or, you know, the paper plant, you know, kind of thing. So we just, and it's, but that's right, that's a great role for us. I mean, that's our job. And so I think, um, and, and in some cases that's us, in some cases that's others, but there there has to be at some point when there's a project to be done, if there's a, you know, a childcare facility to be established or expanded, um, they often need help. I mean, childcare mm -hmm. providers don't tend to be project managers. They don't yeah, tend right. to be business owners yet. And they don't, and so I think that's the permanent fund is really working mm -hmm. on that with technical mm -hmm. assistance but I think that um, you know we all know that the scale of the need and the scale of the assistance and funding available to solve that need, you know, given how it's hard, it's it's and the regulations are strong to protect children and deliver quality care, but they are difficult to navigate. Right. Yeah. And so as with any project, um, a child care facility, whether it's public or private, is 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 a tough mm -hmm. thing to do. 
and, and they require assistance. And we have some, we have a community facilities program funded through USDA, so we can provide help with mm -hmm. those now a little bit. Um, but, you know, the reality is it's, um, these are three and five year projects yeah. and we need to get more going. So <laughs> Great. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure you. having you. Thanks yeah. for tuning in and we'll see you next time.